Hello, beloved. It's me, Robin. Robin Hallett, intuitive healer and light sparkler at robinhallett.com. And this is Tea with Robin. On today's episode, let me introduce you to the nope list. Are there things your ego continues to churn that you just can't seem to get beyond? Welp, the nope list is your friend, my friend. Today, we're going to dive in to that. Our inspiration, let's try something new. New, new, new is the challenge of this time. What can we do to fold in the magic of this beautiful world we live in? Help ourselves stay alive and enlivened in this time. And we'll have a beautiful letter from hashtag accountability partner, all this and more. Come grab a cup of yum yum and meet me here. Well, hello there, gorgeous friend. Hi. (laughs) Hi. Welcome to another beautiful episode together. It's me, Robin, and you and me in the house together. Hello. 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 It's a beautiful day. This is episode 111, 111 for you numbers fans out there, spiritual number. And I am going to say... (laughs) It's already awesome. That's what the 111 means. It is already awesome. And we are riding together in the heart space. If it's your first time here, hello. Hi, it's me, Robin. Thanks so much for giving this a try. I hope that you find some yum yum here and you'll come back again. Come back and see me sometime. Friends. How are you? How is the weather in your heart today? Always my prayer that you are practicing, remembering who you truly are, softening your way through the day in your heart space, easing up on your demands and expectations from the small self, and remembering that joy is what we're here for joy of being alive, joy of eating a meal, a beautifully prepared meal, joy of spending time with friends or family, joy, listening to beautiful music, creating beautiful art, joy, the freedom to come and go as you please, joy, a good night's sleep in a smushy, cozy bed, you know, joy. I hope that you are allowing some joy in and letting yourself be lit up by that. Yes, yes, yes. Over here, it is the most magnificent fall day. I'm recording this on October the 17th. It's the weekend. The colors are spectacular, spectacular. Yellows and oranges and still a lot of green The leaves are mostly still attached to the trees outside my window here. And it is such a wow. The seasons are changing. It is such a wow to see. Um, I've really been practicing. I notice there's a little grievy grieve going on in my heart about summer moving away. And instead of being surprised by that or resisting that or even giving in to the lamentations of that, you know, the sadness, the upset, the denial, it comes, but I say no to it. I say, nope, nope. I say no. I'm practicing allowing myself to be wowed by the way the seasons change, to marvel in the process of how in a few weeks we will change the clocks and everything will be different again. (laughs) Think about things like that. I'm going to be wowed by things instead of upset by things. I'm going to allow the majesty and the grandeur and the splendor to be here. So that's where I'm at. The weather in my heart is good. You know, I am practicing, relaxing, and softening in my body like never before. I'm practicing 
walking and running sometimes, jogging, and allowing myself to feel alive. And it's good. It's beautiful. So, yeah. <laughs> it's 4.44 on the recording right now. Of course, by the time you get this, there might be some edits, because I have a feeling I already said some goofy things that I will probably want to cut out. So, <laughs> Who knows? I say we have some tea and cheers each other. I've got a cup of yum yum here in a beautiful pink cup. I love the color pink so much. I think about the warming. And at the bottom of this cup is a heart, which I love too. I've got some English breakfast tea, Irish breakfast tea. Somebody needs to tell me the difference one of these days. I'll stay in the mystery till you do. I know you're out there listening. <laughs> um, stevia, oat milk, and a little sea salt. And I say cheers to you and your magnificent adventure. Whatever you're doing, wherever you're going, may you and I, okay, me too, remember, this is an adventure. Life is a joy and a journey and beautiful. And it can be and is what we want it to be. All the time we are choosing. Cheers. Mm. So good, so good, so good. And you know, I should I should say just in case, because I always say it, they're building a mountain next door. That's a house. It's huge. Huge. And somewhere in the neighborhood, somebody is, I hope they're just trimming trees, not cutting them down, but there's a buzzsaw I can hear. And you know how it is. You just you adjust all your microphone settings. You turn down the gain. You do all these other things. And probably still hearing some buzzsaw noises. So that's what that is. So friends, today I would like to talk about how of things. People ask me sometimes, but how? They'll write me back after the podcast airs. But how? But how, but how, but how, but how, but how, but how? I'll be talking about things like ego or um, getting through this time, you know, not being so taken down by what you see on the news or the despair we sometimes fall into when we hear things or see things. And our small self, does it spin a yarn or what? <laughs> spin a yarn? Yes, mine does. Mine is... Uh, I have a feeling if I wanted to be a fiction writer, like especially dystopian fantasy, I could write the you-know-what out of that. Because <laughs> my mind, whoa, baby, whoa. Yours too? So today I want to talk a little bit about the how. How do you get your, train your mind, train yourself to stop being so disastrous in your thoughts, to stop being so hard on yourself? To stop being so freaked out by the world, you know, if you're in the States and uh, you catch anything that, <laughs> God, right? Like you catch anything <laughs> on the news or whatever, it's easy to see how you might be off to the races with your freakouts. Economy, politics, environment, right now there's a lot going on, so let us practice. And today I thought I would talk about something I call the nope list. Nope. And you got to enunciate the P's. Nope. 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 Where we draw a hard line on certain topics that we continue to allow our minds to engage us in. Did you hear how I said that? We continue to allow our minds to engage us in. Did you hear how I say that? I didn't say, I keep thinking about this stuff. This is part of the mind that is not our essential self. You know, in The Course of Miracles, it talks about how we need to unwind our mind because it's so sure about everything. And there's lots of teachings about the small self or the ego mind. I love to listen to Muji. I have him on right now as I'm recording, actually. I have him on YouTube I don't know what he's saying, but I'm just looking at him. <laughs> he's moving his hands. And 
I know I can guarantee he's talking about the exact same thing I am right now. <laughs> Do you have your teachers who you love, who you just can't get enough of because they're really speaking to your heart? That is Muji for me. I even have a picture of him on my altar today. You know, we are something so much more, something so so much greater than our little self, the one who I tell you, that's our credit card information. Are you a male or a female? Are you married, single, or divorced? Are you 45 to 55? Are you 37 to, you know, 43? I always want to check the box that says, mind your own damn business. But that box is never there. Anyway, we are so much more than the number on the scale, than the stats. If you're trying to um, measure yourself by your stats, your metrics, we are so much more. But the one in you called the ego or the small self or the suffering self loves stuff like that. And, you know, it's been listening to what you, what you allow to go unchecked in your mind forever. It's been taking notes. It's been studying you. It's been memorizing you. It knows your perceived failings. It knows that you think you stink. It knows that you wish you were more like this person or that person. It knows about your regrets. It knows to conjure up an image of that one movie star, let's say, who sometimes maybe you've coveted their life or their style or their way. You know what I'm saying? I can give you examples all the live long day -o and not hit your favorite greatest hits of your ego. So think about how it is for you. If only, if only, if only. I work with friends who are healing their cancer, um, healing their diabetes, healing their heart disease. They're healing it. And there's a very specific set of stories that come around body stuff. So consider how it is for you. I'll have a little tea while you're thinking about it. Okay. Now, how do you get over this? How do you get through it? How do you stop thinking about it? This is a practice like anything else. I could say, how did you learn how to ride a bike? How did you learn how to cook, fry an egg? How did you learn how to paint? If you know how to paint, how did you learn how to do that? You practiced. How did you get better at walking longer distances or running or sprinting? You had to practice. You had to build up to it. So as we embark on this little, little practice together, you and I, let us first begin with, I am not my ego. And I am willing to practice remembering this. There is one in you that is not you. Think about that for a moment. The one that keeps assuming you're not where you're supposed to be. The one who keeps feeling jealousy and envy of others' success, their career, their relationship status, their recognition. The way things have turned out we begin here with a practice. And the first thing is to understand you are not the small self. You are not the small self. 
That's not you. So how are you? I've been talking about this for weeks and probably months and okay, let's be honest, years. This is probably my the thing I say all the time. How are you helping yourself remember you are God in a body? Because the small self, it loves to rule the roost, doesn't it? You know, it loves to look at you like you're an achievement, either in the making or the failing. You're a career. You're a bank account. That's all you are. <laughs> you're a good weight or a bad weight. You're a good age or a bad age. You know? And without this certain awareness and practice, without the ability to go, ha, huh, I see you. Ha, huh, I caught you. Ha, huh, I heard you. We lose entire days to this dance. And that's okay. Because I think you need a certain, we have to accrue a certain amount of stripes in that suffering before we become ready. The suffering is what comes to wake us up. So, you know, thank you, suffering. Thank you for profound forgetting that I am not my stats. I talk about this here with the podcast. I talk about this on Morning Magic, that there are days where I can tell that more of me is, has been overcome by the voices shouting their bad advice, how I should quit all the things, how nobody wants to hear from me. It feels so real and so true because that story from my particular ego stylings, <laughs> it comes from kindergarten. It comes from, it comes from preschool. It comes from junior high. It comes from high school. It comes from college. It comes from my first boyfriend. It comes from my mother, my father, my family. I'm telling you, if you really sit with this, you're going to see it so clearly that even though you get sucked in sometimes, it's going to become easy to practice because you'll be able to see. It's always talking about how I need this or that, and unless it's that, I'm not okay. Finding your common stories is going to be such a bonus. So don't worry if you lose days or afternoons to this dance. It's okay. It's necessary. We have to start somewhere. And everybody is doing that, by the way. What if we start to take that and let it become our practice? When I catch my suffering, when I catch my upset, because I know my greatest hits, you know, what are your greatest hits? Maybe you're going to write them down. If you'd like some accountability partnering, you know, write something up and tag me. <laughs> Don't tag me on your sweepstakes contest, though. I never understand why people do that. If you want to win a free kettle bell or a crock pot, don't tag me on Instagram. I know. I think it's so funny, but that's something uh, my ego gets very worked up about. So never mind. Go ahead and tag me. If you want to win some free lip gloss or a watercolor pen, yes, I changed my mind. Go ahead and tag me so I have something to practice on. <laughs> right? We get worked up about stuff. So the F what? But if you want to write up your hit list and have an accountability partner, feel free to tag me too. It's good to know. Oh, I get worked up about my age, my weight, uh, stuff about their body. <laughs> you know, could we find a way to bring a little list together of things that we regularly get down on ourselves for and then do a practice. This is what ego does. This is what the small self thinks about. I've talked to you about Abraham Hicks, who often will say, when we're focusing on what was, we suffer. The small self in us, the one that's not really interested in awakening or remembering God, it loves to suffer, and so it focuses on what was. There are a million other possibilities here for us, but what was is a huge hole to get lost in. Paul Selig and the Guides, he talks about history, that the small self only deals in history. Same thing, what was. 
if we're going to open ourselves to what will be, what we would love, possibility beyond measure, possibility of creating with our God self, with the spark we are within, then we have to release what was or the, the list of demands by our ego. So we can use these common places, your common places, your common stories. I'm not going anywhere in my life. I haven't made anything of myself. Here I've built this big following and I don't know what to do with it. I mean, I hear that a lot. I want a big following. It's funny. I wish I could hook people up that I talk to sometimes. The ones with the thing the other person wishes they had. And they could say, I have this thing and it means nothing. It still hasn't healed me, you know? The one who cured their cancer and still has all the mental stories about how they've been jilted, abandoned, not good enough, not liked, not loved. The life is still not good. I thought when on the other side of this, you know, things would be better. They're not, right? <laughs> I wish I could put us all in a room and say, okay, A's, <laughs> A's, you wish you could be, and then you say the thing. And then B's, you have that thing. You have that exact match. The two of you get together and let's have a conversation. <laughs> you know, because maybe, I don't know, maybe we would see. This thing I thought I needed to be, have, do, achieve, it didn't fix it. That's right, because fixing, I mean, you're already fixed. You're already perfect. We need to walk away from some of this stuff. So enter the nope list. And again, please enunciate the P. Nope. Nope. And where I get this from, when I was a little girl, I would go visit my family in, in Germany. And, um, you know, like any family, there was a lot of insanity going on, but there was also some really fun things. And for some reason, you know, I spoke, well, I did speak German fluently. I went to German school I think my mom was smart to have me learn how to speak her home language so I could go stay with my family there and be okay. You know, like I could talk and get along. And But also they loved to hear me speak English and they always wanted me to help them with their English. Does that ever happen to you, those of you who are bilingual? Oh, you can help me learn my English. So I would sometimes clam up with my family and they would ask me questions. And all I would say one summer I came and in the beginning, because it's you don't see people for a whole year and you're a little kid and it's uncomfortable and all the attention's on you and everybody wants you to talk and sing a song for them and show that I don't even know, you know, I just all these I just felt so shy. And this one summer. All I could say was nope and yep. <laughs> and my family, I haven't talked to them in a little while, but they would still tease me about that as an adult. You know, nope, yep. I think the last time I went home, it's been probably 15, 20 years, but they were like, remember when you were a little girl, you would say nope. So enter the nope list. I do believe there is a way, just like some of you have done things like diets, programs, trainings, you have made it for three weeks, six weeks, 90 days, a whole year. There is a line you can start to hold with your stories like that too. The nope list, not one more time. Am I going to allow this story to happen? Not one more time. Am I going to tell how I have been jilted, how I've been abandoned, how people aren't good to me? Whatever your story is, make a commitment to yourself. Make a promise to yourself. I am done telling this story. I am done telling this story. 
I am done telling this story. It can be a big or a small issue. I help people who have carried a story, something they did, something they decided to do, a decision they made that they have regretted for more than two or three decades. And they've carried it like a secret. It could, you could do it for that. Some, source, some story of shame you have. I mean, my God. You know, you just would give anything to be forgiven. Well, you grant that forgiveness by starting with the nope list. You make the decision that you are granting yourself that forgiveness now. Instead of being hard, believing that, you know, like instead of being hard on you, let's be hard on the story. Let's be hard on the story. Let's practice holding it at a distance because we're beginning to realize who we truly are. We are a spark of the divine in this body. We are a spark of the divine in this body. We are expressing through this body. We are expressing through this personality self. So the two are in tandem. The two are in tandem. Usually, though, what we do is let the small self be in charge of everything. It's like this tiny tyrant that's just announcing everything all the time. No, no, no. Okay, that goes on the nope list. We'll be hard on the story for a while. You can put your finger out in front of you like I sometimes talk to you. Not one more time. I still remember, I mean, when I put my, I just did it now and I feel fierce. I'm telling you, I could probably knock the Terminator over with this finger right in this moment. Fierce. I wonder if you feel my energy just shifted. Fierce. I scared myself a little. Not one more time. You know, and it's like, please don't be hard on that you ate pizza. It makes me a little bonkers when people get so worked up. They ate ice cream. They ate pizza. They had some beers. They did this. They did that. Why we keep affirming we're just this body, just this ego, just this weight loss, just this weight gain, just this fitness, just this bank account. Again, the real help comes from remembering your God in the body, that you are going to open your heart and allow this light in to invite the light of who you truly are, to be still and to know you are God and you are one with God, to ask this light to be in communion with you now. You know what's coming to mind now? The friends I've helped over the years who would talk about how they wanted to offer things online, but at the same time, felt embarrassed about the way their hands looked. They just wanted to put their hands into the shot, and they were worried. They felt like their hands weren't beautiful, and that became their story that held them back. No, no, but no amount of me saying no to you is going to help it. It takes the person to say, you know what? I want to to paint. I want to be free. I want to fly free. I want to live free. I want to dance. I want to play. I want to be in my joy more, even more. I want to figure out how to do it with my, the hands and the story I keep telling about my hands, let's say, you know, or that you, maybe you can't dance. I have absolutely zero rhythm, but I still dance, you know, like, you find that place in you that wants to go beyond the story you keep telling. And hopefully you can convert my examples, you know? So that's where this nope list <laughs> comes into play. Say no. The story comes, say no. 
And then you remind yourself that you want to go beyond. You're going beyond. You're going beyond. Whoops. You're going beyond. Who would you be without this thought? That's something Byron Katie often asks in her four questions. Who would you be without this thought? I suck at bowling, let's say. Who would you be without this thought? Somebody who goes to bowl for the fun of it, right? That's what I'm saying. I'm a loser. Who would you be without this thought? Somebody who would take take the risks and join the things and find the clubs and connect with people. Unafraid to show up and connect. Nobody wants to hear from me. Well, who would you be without that thought? I would be somebody that has something to say and doesn't worry about it. So your nope list is very informative. It tells you these are the things I regularly allow my mind to spin. And what these do is hold me back from living in my joy. Me, I just want to be, I want to be free to do and play in the moment as it, as it arises. I want to be surprised by the light in me. I want to be surprised by the true self, by the joys and the delights of being present with people and listening to their story. That's stuff that really excites me. And for every struggle I've had, for as much as I've worried about, should I keep doing things that I'm doing, like the podcast or my healing practice, or am I good enough to keep, sh- who am I to help people? You know, we all have these places. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. In fact, embarrassment belongs to who? The ego. That's not your true self either. So we could just help ourselves through so much of these places to stop identifying as us in these, you know? My point is if we're really identifying how we want to feel, who we want to be in our day without these fears, it will help us through so many blocks, so many obstacles, so many things that belong on the nope list. Now, (laughs) here's the thing. Do you ever judge yourself for having struggles? I am, my hand is in the air. I'm going to, I better put both hands in the air. I judge myself for having struggles. I do. And I shouldn't say I, I should say my ego has this thing it likes to do. So if you're like this too, you are in good company, my friend. After all this time, I'm still upset about this. I should not be upset about this. I should know better by now. You know, you just keep doing this story. Listen, thank your struggle. This is another a sweet pivot you can start to do. Instead of just getting lost in the story again, just thank it. Thank your struggle. Thank your struggle. You know why? We need barriers to help us go to the next level. And we all need places that we can blow through or jump over instead of sitting down and making a campfire (laughs) here and roasting some marshmallows, trying to soothe the one in us who's afraid. It really, it's like mental tennis, actually. It's not really getting us anywhere. We just keep going back and forth with the story. We have to do this next thing. So, you know, if this speaks to you, let us practice. Identify your top stories that really get under your skin. You lose time to them. You lose days to them. They put you in funks that create other kinds of funks, you know. We have to work on this stuff. So identify it, okay? And then practice the nope. Nope. We're not telling this story. Change the subject. Whatever you have to do to change the subject. I had a healer once that would say, I'm a fan of distraction for that reason. When the mind is really dug in. And you know how that goes, right? I, My dog, Charlie, he was a Wheaton Terrier. He got a tick on the tip of his nose once. And I will never forget that. The way it burrowed in. I watched it happening. (laughs) right before I got the blow dryer out and blow dried his nose and watched it come right back out so fast under the heat. 
I feel this is the way the ego operates too. This is the way the small self digs in with the stories. We can do this. We can do this. We can do this. If you want to be alive, you want to be lit up, you want to be in your joy, stop identifying things you must have. You know what I'm saying? You'll never be happy unless you get this stuff. Stop doing that to yourself. If you if you want to feel a certain way, then focus on the vibration on the feeling, but stop identifying things that are ultimately impossible to achieve tomorrow, because that's the way the mind works. You know, you know, that saying overnight success, that's hilarious to me. You know, it's not overnight. Oh, I love that. I don't know if you can hear it, but a horn just honked. We got our psychic horn honk right there. It's never overnight. Years and years and years. Probably in the making, in the wishing, in the hoping, in the dreaming. So, you know, let's work on the nope, 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 no, nope, nope, no, nope, 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 no, nope. <laughs> I've been mentioning Paul Selig to you and there was something that he said in the book of freedom. I listen to these things on repeat sometimes, his books and the course of miracles. Those are some of my favorites because it helps. <laughs> That's why. So one of the quotes he had is there are things we hold sacred that have never been true never, ever been true. This is from day 13 in the book of freedom. Why the, by the way, I'll link this up in the show notes. What do you hold sacred? That's never been true. Sacred, like, you know, I'm a loser. I'm a big fat loser. I'm a big fat loser. That's never made anything of my life. And I need to become somebody or I'll never be okay. Do yourself a favor draw up your nope list and let me know how it goes. And truly from my heart, may that serve you today. You are so loved. And you, you, my friend, you are God in a body. I just want to remind you that if you want to show up in the day, excited to be, just to be, to be on this adventure, to be on this ride. Don't be afraid of not having an agenda or life goals. Please don't be afraid. I see these posts all the time on Instagram about life goals and achieving things. If you're somebody who already really feels deeply that that is not who you are or what you want, don't be afraid to just show up in the day excited to be and to see what comes. To me, that's an advanced skill. A lot of us are, are learning the hard way. So if you're there, rock on with your bad self, as we say, <laughs> with your badass self. Being in the light is where it's at. Being of service by shining as your authentic self in your awakened state of knowing. It doesn't matter what your bank account says. It doesn't matter what your career, what your title is. It doesn't matter. If you have a 600,000, wait, no, 6,000, 6, sorry, 6,000 or 5,000 square foot house to live in, that's not what makes the soul shine. It is not. It's fine to have it. If it's fun for you, it's fine. You came here to play and have fun, but uh, that's not what makes the soul shine. So... It's kind of a nice thing to remember. There's no booby plans needing to be hatched here by the ego in order for you to have a beautiful day. Be in your heart. Be in your joy. Go out in nature. Look at the colors. Make something. Bake something. Smile at someone. You'll see what I mean. Look at somebody in the grocery store. I know who you are in truth. I know you are a spark of the divine, just like me. We are awake here. We're living our lives as these bodies now, but we know who we are. 
Try some of this out and see if there's an aliveness that is there for you and profound. So that may that serve you today, my friend. I hope it does. Mm, I'm all out of tea. Hang on. I got to go get another cup of yum yum. Be right back. Okay. Hello. I'm back. Did you miss me? <laughs> I got a cup of Earl Grey going and this is stash double bergamot. But you know, I got my favorite and it's Tazo and this isn't that, but it's still good. <laughs> I also spilled all the way up the stairs. I don't know how I managed to do that, but if there, <laughs> there's one thing I'm really talented at, it's spilling my tea as I walk, but not on me, just on the floor. <laughs> mm. You definitely do have your favorites, don't you? If you like tea, you know, there's ones that are nice for a little bit, but ah, nothing quite like your favorite. So inspiration today. And I should say, you know, before I say inspiration, I wanted to say thank you so much to those of you who took the time to reach out to me this week. I really do appreciate, appreciate when you stop by um, on a post or you send me an email. I really do appreciate knowing that what I'm doing is helping you. And I wanted to mention that because I think there's something to the accountability piece that's really powerful. If you're feeling helped and you decide to reach out and say so, or you create a post or you share something um, related to this love, to this work, it's also helping you affirm that. And it also helps me to receive it, to know that both of us have a nope list we're working on and we're overcoming certain things. And these are beautiful reminders back and forth to each other. You know, does that make sense? Yeah. So I, I always appreciate knowing. I do. There is a beautiful accountability circle to that. I, I think so many times when somebody comes and leaves a message um, and says, this is every, I needed to hear this today. I feel the same way. I needed to hear that reminder back to me today. I needed to hear that reminder back to me today because I have this thing I do too, where I'm like, you know, questioning every damn thing. So we help each other. It's like a circle of accountability. It's beautiful. I love it. So inspiration today. The inspiration is to try something new. Do something new. Help yourself with something new. You know, think of something you did that was fun and different and how much you got out of it. You know what I'm talking about. There is nothing more powerful now than helping yourself out of these places we can get into where maybe it feels hopeless. Maybe it feels helpless. Maybe you feel totally stuck and out of options. You're so dialed down on, dialed in, you know, tuned in to your fear or this evidence, you know, you know what your evidence is. Go out and re judge the juggernaut for you. re judge the juggernaut for you. Help yourself blow through these things that regularly hold you back by adding in something new to the mix. I think we do focus on, it feels like we do focus on what we have to stop doing and getting rid of. And I did just spend the whole essay talking about that sort of, but let's not forget what we add in is just as amazing. 
When I went to the Morton Arboretum a few weeks ago, that stayed with me. I still got the pine cones. In fact, I was so surprised I didn't realize they continue to open um, and change. I have a friend right now. She is, hi, Melanie, hatching butterflies on her lanai. It was a total happy accident. She got some milkweeds and planted them and almost immediately arrived the big monarch caterpillars. And then one day they just disappeared. We didn't know where they went. And then she found them, some of them, in her lanai, on her patio. They were starting to sew themselves up into their cocoons. And now they have created their chrysalis. I think it's, I don't know. Pardon me for my unfancy language. They're starting to sew themselves in. And some, this as of this morning, I saw some are really in their solid little cocoon, in their pupa, you know, they're going to emerge. We're, they're going to emerge. Is there something so exciting as that going on for you? What can you be involved in that will enliven and enrich you and keep you in the mystery and the wonder like nothing else. Can you go out for a hike where you are now? Some of you are blessed to be entering cooler weather in a warmer climate. So while you had to be indoors pretty much all summer long, now you can get out and explore. What can you do to stay in your wonder, stay in your newness? I myself began painting last week. Um, I decided I was going to start and I'm working on a little Guadalupe, Virgin Guadalupe painting, and it's coming along beautifully. And I also had collected some driftwood from all my beach forays this summer, and I have a heart-shaped um, a piece of wood that looks like a heart on a stick. <laughs> that didn't sound good, but you know, it's beautiful. And I've been painting that too, and I love, I have it here on the altar today. I love how it looks. What can you do that's different? What can you add in now? Um, number one is building himself a gym in the basement for winter. It sounds kind of, it's going to be beautiful in there. And we're having so much fun moving furniture around and making things special. What can you do that's new that will add in some zest, <laughs> some zest for your day? What can you do? How can you help yourself? It could be as small, if you're not able to do a lot right now, it could be as small as a new essential oil in your diffuser. I happen to love all of the balsam fir, pine, um, you know, those kinds of smells. Oh, I love it so much. Rosemary is amazing in the diffuser. What can you do? Help yourself. I can even smell today Jeff's been burning, that's number one husband, he's been burning some incense. I brought him back from Bali and now he's burning um, incense. We got together at the, in Assisi at the Basilica. I love it. It's so wonderful. So new, that's the inspiration today. New, 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 new. <laughs> Did I say new? What's the inspiration today? I can't hear you. New. Yes, new. Mm. New. 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 So this week's letter, this came from a friend on Instagram, and I picked it because I think it's a beautiful example of how we serve just by being us, even when we might judge it. So this goes out to Megan. Hi, Robin. I just listened to the episode 103, and I'm holding space in my heart for you in this time. I know you don't ask for this, but I'd like to send you some loving energy to help you through this time. You are an amazing woman, and if it weren't for you, I don't know where I would be in my journey maybe still struggling. Who knows? So thank you for being honest about how you're feeling, for not hiding it, 
in order to be strong for others. It's something I'm also working on. Thinking of you and giving you a great big hug. Megan. And thank you so much. It's really beautiful. And, you know, we don't always realize how much being of service um, our being ourselves is, you know, being real, keeping it real. We don't realize how much of a service that is. We don't always understand how we are shining, how we are of service by being ourselves. I was talking to you about the small self, the ego self today in our essay. And that part of us thinks, that part of us that's engaged in thinking, I need to be somebody. I need to be recognizable to stand in the light as a name that people know or a thing or a service or a course or a, you know, I have to create, I have to be, I have to... We don't understand that how we are most of service is by just being naturally ourselves. That what we share goes on to the next person and helps them. And like Megan says, I don't know where I'd be if you weren't here, if sharing, talking about these things, I don't know where I'd be. And, you know, that that implies, obviously, she's willing to help herself by receiving, too. You know, it's not just like one of us is the magician bestowing the blessings. This is what I was saying before, the accountability factor. I help you and you help me. And together we rise. Together we um, rise in our energy I'm always careful when I say that word rise, you know, because I don't mean um, as much of the worldly manifestations. You know, I think the ego is so concerned with being so good that it will finally get its rewards. And the rewards are often material things, possessions and positions and accolades and titles, you know, but we rise in our energy, we rise in our ability, we rise in our knowing, we rise in our um, vibration. And that means we remember who we truly are. And we weather storms that the ego has all the time, unflustered. You know, it's beautiful. So I, I wanted to read this today to also say thank you back to you, Megan. Um, you know, thank you for taking the time to write that down. It's funny, I hadn't even been thinking about that when I said this earlier, that when you reach out to me, it helps me feel accountable to keep showing up. It helps me through my own nope list. When I try and talk myself out of doing when my my suffering one tries to talk me out of doing the podcast, I come back to this kind of accountability all the time. So I save this letter in my favorites and I appreciate the kindness and I wish you well and I'm so happy to know you're doing well too. It's really It's really fun to be in our love posse together and know how each of us is making our way. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And friends, if I can answer anything for you, if you have a request, something I can answer for you, please write to me. You can even give yourself an, a made up name. It's fine. Or you can be anonymous. It's let me know how I can help. You can write to me at hello at robinhallett.com. Come to the show notes page robinhallett.com slash 111. That's this episode or reach out to me on social media. Also, don't forget morning magic every day, 9am central daylight time until November 1st or 2nd, and then we'll be back to standard time, central standard time. So wherever you are, I'm in Chicago, by the way. 
will keep riding and rising together and helping one another make it through this time and beyond together, 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 together. So, wow, this was a lovely episode. Not bad for 111. I'm thinking of Miss Miss Mary, are you out there, who wrote me an email and said, we got to get you to 111 D when I was right when in 103, when I was having such a hard time. Here we are, Mary, 111 D <laughs> and beyond. And I can't wait for 112 next week or in a few minutes. This has been me, Robin, Awesome Heart, Sparkle Sauce, Hallett, sending you so much love. And I'm going to see you here next time. Bye-bye. Life is very short. Let's make the very most of it. You are a precious gem and I love you. Do, 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 do. We are here to shine and shine bright. You are a gem and I Life is precious and you are a spark of the divine. So shine like you know it, rock it like you mean it, cause you really, really mean it. And mean it, and mean it, and mean it, and mean it. Don't let crispy people tell you that you aren't sparkly. Cause you are, cause you are, cause you are. Thank you. I like that. I love it, honey. Thank you. Give me a kiss.